let's uh, talk about OS X. Our latest release, Mountain Lion, is the ninth of our big cat named releases in just over a decade. As we turn our attention now toward the 10th, we've hit a real issue. <laughs> we do not want to be the first software in history to be delayed due to a dwindling supply of cats. <laughs> now, fortunately, we do have a creative group at Apple, and we can think out of the box. And so we thought, maybe we could take this lion thing in a different direction. So I'm proud to present to you today OS X Sea Lion. <laughs> what do you think? Okay, maybe not. That could be a bit of a dead end. So, <laughs> in fact, we're really excited about the future of the Mac, and we want a set of names that are going to carry us for at least the next 10 years. And you know, the answer really was really obvious to us. It's those places that inspire us here in California, in the place where OS X is designed and built. So for our first California-themed release, we went just outside our backyard, just off the coast, to a place with some of the biggest waves and most extreme surfing in all of North America, OS X Mavericks. Now, Mavericks, is a release with deep technology focused on extending battery life and providing responsiveness. It has great new apps and enhancements for every Mac user and some features that we think are gonna really appeal to our power users. And I wanna talk about just three of them right now, starting with Finder tabs. <laughs> Sounds like you guys know how this is gonna work. So, <laughs> You, of course, can work in the Finder with multiple windows. It's a very powerful tool. But now you can draw all those windows together in tabs. And each tab can have its own location, its own view mode. It's really powerful, too. You can actually drag contents and hover across tabs. And of course, now that we have tabs in the Finder, it's also a great app to take full screen. Next, tagging. Yes. <laughs> that guy. We're bringing tagging to the Mac. So now, when you save a document, in addition to providing its location and name, you can tag it. And when you do, it'll appear right in the Finder sidebar. And in fact, you can tag things wherever they are, whether they're in iCloud or on a local file share. And all those will be brought together and appear in Finder. And tags are great for really powerful search as well. Next, yeah. Next, multiple displays. Really? All right. The Mac, of course, we're not giving you all the free multiple display here. This is a <laughs> software. So uh, with multiple displays in the Mac, it's always been a powerful way to spread out your work. But now, in Mavericks, you can get at your menus across multiple displays. You can summon your dock across multiple displays. And when you take a window full screen on one display, it doesn't mess with your desktop on the other display. And I really love this, when you pan your spaces, you can do it independently on each of your displays. Finally, if you have an AirPlay connected HD TV, it acts as a full power separate display as well. And I'd like to show all of this to you now. All right, let's take our first look here at Mavericks. And we're going to start with the Finder. So here's the Finder environment. I got a lot going on, a lot of windows, a lot of different locations. I'm going to go up here to the window menu and let's merge all my windows. Just like that, they hop into a set of tabs. Now, of course, these tabs have different locations, different view settings for each of those locations. 
creating a tab is just as you'd expect. Just click plus, I can select another location, like AirDrop, maybe another for this work file share I have going right here. And now that I have multiple uh, tabs, it's a really great way to actually work and copy documents. So if I want to copy this field report, I can just hover over the AirDrop tab, drop it, just like that, really nice. And of course, I can now take Finder full screen. Next, let's take a look at tagging. This is really cool. So as I go to save a document, you notice I can give it a name, like let's say project plan. And in addition to its location, in this case I'm gonna save it in iCloud, I can also give it a tag from any of the tags I've uh, made up. So I'm gonna call this document important. It looks pretty important to me. And we'll go here into the finder, and you see in the finder sidebar, I have an important tag and I see all these documents. They're from different locations, different applications, all drawn together in sidebar. We have other tags I've given things for things that are draft and in review. Now, of course, with tags, I can assign multiple tags to the same document. That's part of the power of tags. So I go here, and I'm gonna say this one is also in review. And you notice as I assign that tag, it now appears in that location as well. And if I want to assign a totally new tag, I wanna make up a tag on the fly, I can just type it right here. This is a website project I'm working on. It says create new tag website. And just like that, I've created a new tag, and you can see it right here in the finder. I can give that tag a color, of course. And now that I have that tag, I can also assign tags by just dragging things in to the tag area in the finder. So different assets for my website, just drag them in and they're tagged like that. And tags are great for searching. So if I start typing, let's say, important, I can find all documents that are important. Let's go to all my files and we'll find all documents that are both important and that are in review. And just like that, I found exactly what I'm looking for with tags. <laughs> Next, let's take a look at multiple displays. I'm gonna open up some of the kind of windows that I'm often working with. We'll open up iPhoto here, maybe a, uh, a keynote presentation. And I actually have a second display connected to this uh, MacBook Pro. Let's uh, show that up there on the display now. Of course, with multiple displays, I can just move windows cross displays like you'd expect, but now I can get up at my menu bar on the second display. If I go down to the bottom, I can summon the dock just like that. If I wanna open an app on the second display, I can just open it on the dock here, and here's uh, iTunes. I can take this app full screen just like that, and as I swipe spaces, just right back there just on that display. Let's take a Keynote full screen as well. I'm gonna go back to my uh, first display here. Let's even take iPhoto full screen. So now I have different full screen apps on my different displays. It's actually a really fantastic way to work. Go in here into favorite travels, and I can now drag assets across my full screen apps like that, super cool. And mission control has just been supercharged for multiple displays. So I'm gonna go now into uh, mission control, and we see my different full screen spaces and uh, uh, desktops across applications. I can drag a window from one display to another, but I can also go and drag a full screen app right across displays, bring preview open, and now I have that full screen on this display as well. <laughs> Finally, I actually have an Apple TV uh, around here. Let's bring that into play. So here's my, here's my Apple TV. Now, uh, this, is, this is pretty over the top. So I can actually go here into uh, AirPlay, I'm gonna to connect to this Apple TV. So now it's a full power display as well. You can see I have my menu bar and my dock. I can go over here and get my dock here. And I can go into mission control even, and I can go get a window across that other display. We'll just drag Keynote over here, right on to my Apple TV and open it up. There it is, full displays in Mavericks. Next, I'd like to talk about some advanced technologies in Mavericks. You know, our power users are increasingly doing their work on the go. They want great responsiveness, but they also want great battery life. And in Mavericks, we've introduced a whole host of technologies to address that challenge. 
Things like compress memory that make sure you have memory available very quickly when apps demand it. Technologies like AppNap that actually make sure we're directing power only to those applications where you're really benefiting from it. System-wide core animation accelerated scrolling and OpenGL 4 for super responsive graphics. And a topic I want to go into in a bit more detail now, timer coalescing. So you know, when you look at battery life on your computer, the real factor that software has the most influence over is CPU activity and its draw on power. And if you look at what your system is doing at any given uh, time, what you'll see as you look under the hood is not a smooth line, but actually hundreds of interrupts occurring per second where the system is going from a power efficient sleep state up to a state of uh, high power use and back down. And all of those transitions actually consume a lot of power. Well, in Mavericks, we intelligently align all of that work, reducing those number of transitions. This, in combination with technologies like AppNap and other power optimizations, reduce CPU utilization activity for these kinds of scenarios up to 72%. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> Next, let's talk about compressed memory. Nothing affects the performance of your Mac, the responsiveness more of a Mac that's under load than its ability to provide free memory to an app. Now typically, when you look at your app runtime, all your memory is inactive. In fact, a subset of your memory is actively being used, and others is memory we have to keep around but isn't being used by the app. Well, now if you open a document, your system is going to need to get free memory, and it does that in the past by writing those inactive bits of memory out to disk, and that's a slow process. Now, with compressed memory, we're able to rapidly compress the inactive memory, making free space available almost instantaneously to the application. This can have great effects on responsiveness of systems under load. You see 1.4x kinds of improvements, even on fast SSD systems for activities like opening new documents or reactivating an application, and up to 1.5x improvement for waking a system from standby. These are just two of many improvements to power and performance in Mavericks. Next, let's talk about Safari. In the last decade of life, Safari has focused not just on providing the easiest to use and most elegant browsing experience, but also the most innovative. These are the kinds of innovations that Safari has brought. Private browsing, blocking of third-party cookies for privacy, making the web easier to read with features like reading list, and the HTML5 audio and video tag, all Safari firsts. And the engine in Safari, WebKit, is used by over 1.5 billion devices. Well, in Mountain Lion, we're making Safari even better. We have a great, clean, new home page with top sites. From there, you can get at a great sidebar where you have access to all of your bookmarks, and you can browse right from your bookmarks. And in that sidebar, we also have reading list, where now you can continuously scroll through your articles, moving from article to article without ever having to click. And a great new feature called shared links, where you see all of the links shared by people you're following on Twitter and LinkedIn. You can browse them right here. Now, in addition to these end user improvements, there's also a lot going on under the hood. Big improvements to JavaScript a full process per tab architecture and memory efficiency improvements with shared memory resource cache and a whole bunch of big power savings as well. When you look at the effects of these changes, it's pretty profound. If you take a synthetic benchmark like SunSpider, you see how Safari fares against the competition. But you know, researchers have started to look at more real world JavaScript by sampling the JavaScript that actually occurs on sites like the Google homepage, Facebook, Amazon.com. And when you look at Safari's performance on a benchmark like that, JS Bench, the results are really incredible. <laughs> Safari is also awesome when it comes now to memory usage, using way less memory than the other browsers, which means more memory for you to browse with more tabs and do more on your system. And when it comes to energy use, it's not even close. Safari uses way less energy than Chrome, and when you compare to Firefox, it's just kind of sad. 
so that's Safari. I'd love to give you a demo of some of our advanced technologies in Safari right now. <laughs> 